So, you want to play gin? You want to learn how to perform? How to create a masterpiece? You want to be able to feel the satisfaction of landing that fourth shot just right? I can show you, but be prepared to take a few mental steps back. <laughs> Sorry, no spook intended, but I wanted to just take this moment to just talk about myself quickly. So I'm Nanoshock, I play Jun at around Diamond Elo. I'm Diamond 4 in EU West, and I'm Diamond 5 in NA. Um, I have three accounts where I literally only play Jun. And I just thought I'd just take a, a bit of time just to just talk about Jin and because it's been requested of me and I thought I'd just let you guys know uh, just how great this Virtuoso is. So just before we begin I just wanted to say that this is the first time I'm doing a guide like this. Um, if I do tend to slow my words a little it's because I'm doing it as improv and I don't have, really have a script written. I'm sorry about that, I'm sorry if it ruins your experience. Um, also, I'm only touching on runes, masteries, items, and just a few gameplay tips in this guide. More in-depth guide for the laning phase, uh, matchups, and other you know, in-depth pointers like that might come later. It really depends on this video here. So, before we do anything else, let's begin. So, first things first, when do you pick Jen? Well, if you're like me, you're going to pick Jin whenever you damn please, and that's okay. But if you're like everyone else that's watching this guide, you're probably thinking of adding Jin to your champion roster. Now, in the bot lane, I would generally pick Jin with supports like Nami, Sona, Zyra, Brand. You know, very pokey supports. Bard is a very good pick too. Um, he's very weak against oppressive flames such as Thresh, Blitzcrank, and Lucian Amat. Uh, in the mid lane, I generally pick Jin when there are they've already picked their mid laner and it's not an assassin. Assassins like Zed, LeBlanc, Fizz are just going to ruin his day and you're just going to end up feeding. Um, now Jin is a hyper carry in the sense of Cogmore and Vayne, and because he is very item dependent, it's very hard for him to duel anyone early game. Whereas late game, he can pretty much duel anyone he really damn well pleases. Uh, as a mid laner, you bring more of a siege mentality to the game with your ult and your W. And as an AD carry, well, you're going to be using your auto attacks a lot more. Uh, his gank potential is pretty good as a mid laner, as you can just roam in any lane and press the R key and just snipe people away from their lives. As an AD carry, you're generally not going to roam a lot, but he does secure dragon very well, which I'll explain much later. Anyways, so now we're going to move on to Masteries. So for Masteries on Jin, I prefer to go 18 in Ferocity, 12 in Cunning, and none in Resolve, and I'll talk about that later. But uh, the main reason is Deathfire Touch. This is your keystone, this is your main keystone, and this is just a beautiful keystone for Jin. Um, it has uh, the, the scaling of 60% of your bonus attack damage, and the way it works with your W and R is that they they proc the full single target attack um, bonus damage that Death by Touch procs. So you are doing, with your W late game, you are doing the initial W damage, so about 600 damage late game, and then you're also doing this 400 damage, 450 damage, magic damage dot as you know for the next the next four seconds and it's just absolutely insane that you you, you can turn literally turn into a hybrid um, damage dealer with your abilities anyway because of this interaction you can ult and whilst your team is CCing someone uh, you can ult and then you can just take away the health and just you know space out your ultimate uh, shots as death by ticks down on them and you can literally 100 and zero any squishy late game because of death by touch you know, proccing and therefore increasing your ultimate damage. Um, it's very, it's a very nice interaction. Honestly, I'm really glad Riot changed it to that. Um, now, moving on to the other masteries and the ferocity tree, I'll just quickly go through them. We take sorcery over fury because whilst the attack speed is nice, it does work in your passive and your AD. Sorcery just amplifies your abilities, and Jin actually uses abilities quite a lot. His ultimate and his W actually do a lot of damage. His grenades do a lot of damage. Um, and they'll more benefit from sorcery. 
Um, I took Feast because in the mid lane I kind of like a bit of sustain. Um, it works out to about, um, I think it's 0 0.8, uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.75 health per second. It's nice. It's, it's just there. It's something there. Um, exposed weakness is a good uh, also because if you're in the bot lane, I prefer to expose weakness. Your support does more damage basically. And double edged sword, while it is nice, um, you're also taking more damage. And you don't want that as Jin. You want to survive as long as possible. Uh, and it's just better to take Feast or Exposed Weakness, in my opinion. Vampirism, Lifesteal and Spell Vamp scale throughout the entire game. Natural Talent, at most you're going to get about 22, 20 AD at the end at level 18. Not really worth it. Just absolutely, just go for Vampirism. It'll work the entire game. It'll be nice. Um, Bounty Hunter, you're working on snowballing. If you are playing, I think, competitive or, you know, in the team, I'd probably go Oppressor. Because uh, you're most likely going to get camped, and people are going to be more, you know, cooperative, and your support can give you that extra damage. But Bounty Hunter, no. You want to go Bounty Hunter definitely for solo queue. Um, Battering Blows, 7% armor penetration, that's no brainer, you're an AD carry. Now, moving on to the Cunning Tree, I prefer to take Wanderer over Savagery. That's because I know how to last hit generally, and it's. I like to roam as a mid laner. Uh, savagery is obviously a good idea because if you are running the arm wounds, which I'll talk about later, um, savagery does help with that last setting. But you should be learning to you know manage your last setting, so you want to go wanderer, uh, preferably. <coughs> I prefer to go assassin because I'm a mid laner. I'm usually alone, obviously. Um, but secret stash is also viable, and so is runic affinity if you want to get more red buffs or blue buffs, depending you know if you're AD carry or mid laner or both if uh, you're greedy like me. Uh, Merciless is not, is actually the reason why I go in the Cunning Tree, because it works so well with your ult uh, that last crit can get like an extra 10% or 12% increased damage because of the, the execution damage and the way it works and the fact that Merciless is also working on it as well. It's just a, such a nice interaction. Um, obviously Defy Touch works on this as well. So it's just, it's just such a nice mastery and I think this is what makes the Cunning Tree so good. Uh, dangerous game, saved my life so many times, you're not support, you don't want bandit. Now the reason we don't go in the resolve tree is because of Merciless, but the, also the other thing is, is you kind of want to deal as much damage as possible, whilst you, you might want to survive, there's nothing you can really get. Maybe you runic armor for a bit more lifesteal, but nothing really here that you actually would want. Um, for the other keystones, Thunderlords I've seen, um, it kind of just sucks light game, because you kind of just proc it once and it's kind of just like oh and you really don't have a, a quick way to proc it you have to like land a grenade or to attack w it's not that good it's good in laning phase though i will guarantee that it's really nice in laning phase uh storm raider surge you already if you're going to go the build i'm going to go you already run way too fast and it actually doesn't give any you know damage it's just straight up utility um no it's it's really just not needed Maybe against a Nasus or like a Yi, so you can outrun them. Even then, no. Further battle, I've seen some gens go that. I don't know why. They suck. Warless Blood Dust, you're not aiming to go low on health, so you can life steal. Life steal you can get anyway from items. It doesn't actually benefit you uh, too much. Um, just the way Jin works is they're probably going to kill you. If you tend to get low that low, so you can use a life steal. Yes, you might get more life back when you crit, but it's kind of like, no. It's much better to go with DFT in my opinion. So quickly just going on to runes here for Jin. I prefer to take points of movement speed. Why? Because when I'm getting ganked the mid lane or the bot lane, the only thing I have is my sheer movement speed to save me. I can't reliably hit my passive because I can only hit up my fourth crit. I can't reliably escape because the, the only CC I have, which is my root, or, you know, my, my traps kind of suck, right? So the only reliable scape I have is my root, and you root roots yourself, so you just wouldn't use it. So the only thing I have is to run away, just run for my sheer goddamn life. Um, otherwise, I'd go Quints of um, Armor Penetration. That's what I would do, to get that nice uh, 19 Armor Penetration to 12. Now, the reason why I go Marksman Armor Penetration rather than AD is because whilst AD does scale and you know all that beautiful stuff that other people will say, armor penetration works beautifully with the execute damage of your ult and the fact that your fourth shot, uh, basically most of it damage comes from the missing percent health 
um, execute that it does. So from 15% to 25% it scales up to. Only that is affected by armor pen. 80 does not affect that. So you really want to want armor pen runes. It's most gin mains will agree on this. If they do not agree on anything else, they will agree with armor pen runes. So I'll give you that. Now people call me ancient for running these two things. These disgusting uh, scaling armor and scaling mag resist seals and lifts. The reason why I go scaling armor is because at level 6 um, you basically uh, go even with flat armor runes. And there's never been a moment where I've gone, oh, I, I, I died here because I didn't go, you know, flat armor seals. I, there has been places where I've gone, oh god, I've lived because I hadn't scaling armor runes. Because it just scales um, to 18 more armor late game after level 6. And 1 to 6 you kind of suck anyway, you can just get all... Um, after you get your, you kind of get good. Sorry, after you get your ult. Um, scaling magic resist. That's just personal preference. I probably should take uh, flat arm magic resist in the mid lane, but I kind of like like having um, 57 MR late game than 42. It's just a personal thing, honestly. And that's it for runes. So now we're going to move on to items. So now we're moving on to items. Um, I'm just going to start with starting items now. So general start. When I go Doran's blade and pots. Um, reason why, typical AD carry, Doran's Blade start, uh, 80, 80 attack damage, 80 health, 3% life steal, great stats for Jin. Um, you can go cool, I wouldn't go cool, because you're kind of giving up your already shitty late game, for an even shittier late game compared to everyone else. Um, whilst it does give you that gold back, it's really not worth it, you're probably going to die taking this, honestly. Um, I would say that if I'm going back and I've got a bit of extra gold, I will get either a second Doran's Blade or I'll get a BF Sword and Call, for example. BF Sword and extra Doran's Blade. Um, boots, four parts, it's fine. You can go that. The, that's completely fine. Uh, especially against someone like LB or Zad where you need to dodge a lot of their skill shots. Um, and then Corrupting Potion, whilst I don't perfectly go it, I have seen it's a good use on Jen. Gives you that um, uh, attack damage over time, gives you that um, the, the health and the mana. Uh, it's just nice. It's a nice item. I like this item actually. Now your core. Um, generally I start building IE first, and I firstly I go BF, then I go Pickaxe, then I go Crit, and then I go obviously IE itself. Um, and then after that I'll either make Zeal and then make Boots. Boots of Swiftness, because you can go fast, the slow resist is kind of just there as a bonus. Now, Zerka Greaves, I will actually probably start going from the next patch, mostly because they're upgrading it to plus 5% attack speed, so it's 35% attack speed, and Swifties are getting nerfed to 1000 gold as opposed to 900. So it actually might be better to go Greaves now, because obviously that attack speed works on your passive and your uh, bonus AD. Uh, Mercury Treads, this I'll go if I'm, you know, being CC'd a lot or, you know, there's a very AP heavy team. Uh, you know, at least Cocoons, Morgana Binds, Fiddlestick Fears, all that jazz. Um, it really helps against that. It, it saved my life quite a few times. Ninja Tabby, Yi, Aatrox, Jax, Trundle, Fiora, all, Aurelia, all them. Ninja Tabby is what I'll go if I really, really need to survive against a fed, one of those, basically. Um, now the 100% crit guard build, this is what you want to do if you want to go for maximum damage output. Um, I personally go Ruin and Hurricane for my second zeal item. So after finishing my PD, I will quickly rush a Ruin and Hurricane if I'm getting ahead. Um, and the reason why is because it gives 2% more movement speed than the other, giving you 7%. And it also gives you the second most attack speed. And its passive allows you to wave clear. And its passive also gives you 15% 15 physical damage. And uh, the passive bolts. Basically, if, so if you're auto attacking and you crit, your auto attack run travels faster than the bolts. So the bolts can then come in and then crit a minion or like another champion, and you get like an extra precious 0.5 seconds of your passive. And that can mean the difference between life and death. It, is, it has saved me before, and I swear it has. It has saved me before. Um, after rushing Brunan's Hurricane, I will generally go um, Bloodthirster or Death Dance. Death Dance because it works on your ultimate and your W. You can go into a fight, get low, 
run back, ultimate, kill someone, and then run back in with full health because your ultimate, your fourth shot from your ultimate crits, procs your passive, makes you go fast, and you've got all your health back, and it helps you survive as well. Well, really well with the PD combo there. Bloodthirst is my general choice because you generally want to tend to auto attack more. You get five percent more life steal, and the shield is really nice. And then to top it all off, I'll go Essence Reaver. It's the perfect item. You go from 80% crit to 100% crit. You have uh, 65 AD, which is then pretty much doubled. And then you get all that CDR, which is lovely for your ults and everything else. P pairing all this, so PD, Essence Reaver, and Death Dance will give you that precious, precious 40% CDR cap. So you're just maximizing efficiency at that point. Um, now, moving on to situational items. Uh, I will say that LDR and Mortal Romander are good items, but they only work on bonus armor penetration, and it's just it's just generally not that good. Whilst the 15% physical damage is nice on Jin, Essence Reaver as a last item just gives you so much more utility with the CDR and um, it's crit chance. You want to get that 100%, so you can always proc your passive. Um, more Val Multius, yes, uh, that's always situational. Same with Mercurial Scimitar. Now that they've nerfed it, it was one of my key lifesteal items, but now that they've nerfed it, it's kind of situational. Yumus. Sometimes I'll sell boots for Yumus. Yumus is a great damage boost. Yumus makes you freaking OP. But you have to sell boots, generally, and I can't really find a way to fit it in in my build. But I'll buy Yumus, because Yumus is beautiful. BC, same deal. Sometimes I'll sell boots for it. You do get that 60... Um, movement speed for every time you do a physical damage it's just nice but mm, no no sometimes i don't know you can you also waste you know if you go essence reaver and then you sell boots for this you kind of waste a bit of cooldown reduction whereas with the yumus you can go bt forgive the death dance and then go yumus ghost blaze and just run really fast um now for imperfect items to not perform with i'll explain these two these two just kind of suck compared to Hurricane and uh, PD. Yes, the magic damage is nice. Yes, shift can crit. Yes, shift is wave clear. Yes, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, it gives you the range. You're never going to use this on your fourth order attack. Rarely does it come on your fourth order attack when you're chasing. Um, if it does, whoopee, whoopee. But, you know, you're, you're going to be in range anyway because you run so bloody fast. And Static Shiv, the extra damage kind of just, no. You're better off with more AD, honestly. Triforce, just get this. Uh, Rage Blade, um, yeah, I've seen people get this, I don't know why, Jin actually has nothing that works on it, I, I, I don't know why people get this, I actually don't. Uh, Blade of the Ring King, no, just no, it, it doesn't give enough AD and your pass the passive just doesn't work well with you, no. Starrix Gauge, it's only good against Rengar honestly, other than that I wouldn't get it, you have really low base health damage scaling, so, no. And Dust Blade of Dragfell, no. You never proc it in your fourth auto when it matters. So just no. Uh, and that's all for items, actually. So when it comes to combos with the Jin, uh, there are only really two combos you can actually do. But uh, playing Jin well is more about positioning, uh, mechanical prowess, and know how. Um, and hopefully, I can teach you a few things here that can enhance your gameplay and maybe secure you a kill or two, or even dragon. So just pay attention and watch it. So just starting off, did you know that you're a better jungler than your actual jungler? You may not have smite, but you do have that fourth crit, and it can actually out damage your jungler's smite, meaning it's really good for dragon, rift herald, scuttle grab, red buff, and blue buff. And if you're really, really fed, um, baron as well. Um, it works especially well when you have your infinity edge. And if your jungler trusts you, you can make them smite first, and then you can just auto last, and it makes it for really, really quick jungle clears. So another thing I want to point out is the way that your fourth uh, auto attack interacts with the champions or anything in general. Um, you will see here that a uh, bot does run into the bush here, and I try to auto him like normal, but I kind of just lose vision, and I just can't auto attack, and I just feel all sad. But when I try and hit him with my fourth auto, even though I lose vision, I'm still able to hit him. You know, my passive procs, I get life steal, and bot himself, as you can see, is evidently hurt. Yeah, dude. So um, now another interaction with the fourth shot here is if you just see Bard will flash away, but the fourth shot will still go through and fall on all the way. And you might be thinking, hmm, don't don't all champions do that, melee or ranged otherwise? And I'm gonna say no. 
you need to go through uh, for other champions you need to go through a few key animations before the actual auto attack is sent but with Jin and his four shot it literally just has to start the first frame of the animation before it will hit them though you can you will not be able to dodge it at all unless you go invulnerable in some sort of way so Zonya at least repel fizz pole anything like that so that's a very good thing to bear in mind you can actually just finish off people they will flash and then they will die kind of works in the way of uh, Garen ultimate if you've ever seen him that used uh, when flash. So quick combo here. You're in the mid lane. Bot comes over. You just snare him on the traps. Takes big damage, and then you can just follow up with a bit of fighting. Now I do like to do chickens when I'm in mid lane, especially if you have a BF sword. I know I'm doing this enough, and so it's a bit, you know, dodgy. But you usually just need to lay down a trap, auto one of the chickens, Q one of the chickens, so it, the grenade that kills it and then you just finish off the big one and usually you can do this with the BF sword and you will go back to uh, the mid lane in time before you miss any CS so that's what I like to do sometimes alright so here's just a really quick comment to finish someone off here it's going to be so many kills uh, basically what you want to do is you want to stack your fourth auto attack and then you just want to quickly f flash Q and then auto for the kill dead boom um, you want to Q first because you want to get that extra execution damage on your auto attack and it's usually quick enough the projectile that they they usually don't tend to flash in time before you can get that auto off so it's a really good a combo and it's going to be so many kills no one expects it so here I'm pretty fed and I'm just looking to take the enemy jungler's chickens. I'm gonna just try to snare me but I just end up killing her instead because I'm that fed. But Quinn is here, she does blind me and in between my auto attacks I do use my abilities and that pretty much wins me the fight. Um, if you don't use your abilities you end up just having this wasted opportunity time to use it and it's really good to fit them in between your autos. So me and Blitzcrank are trying to set up for Dracula along with our team and Zach just engages on the Blitzcrank and then his entire team follows up and instead of just fighting with my auto attacks, I'm not really doing that much damage, I decided to ult in the brush. And the reason I do that is because Zach is just really fed this game and I'd rather just get that damage out with my ultimate and it secures us two good kills. Um, and then I can pick up the third kill on Rome there. But as you can see, if I just decided to fight, Zach would have probably focused me and I would have just died at that point. Um, as it, he just ends up chasing me and killing me and I wouldn't have been able to get that damage out. So it's always good to recognize when you can use your ult and when you're not able to uh, get damage off of your auto attacks. So just a quick combo here to summarize this section, I'm just going to walk up to Bard here with two bullets in my magazine I'm just going to go auto, root, auto and then cue him whilst I'm reloading and then use my ultimate for the curtain call and to try and finish him off. Now the reason why I use the Q after my last auto instead of using the Q first is because I'm not really going to kill him with the execute damage, that fourth auto isn't going to kill him. I'm probably going to try and kill him with my ult. So it's better to get that fourth auto off to make sure nice. the damage is done and then get the Q off later because it does have a longer range. So here I'm just going to showcase that combo, I'm just going to quickly get two bullets in my magazine and I walk up to Morgana. Auto, root, Q, and then also for the execute. So that just about wraps up this part of the guide. Um, I was thinking of making a section on laning phase, mid game, late game, and general matchups. But to be honest, uh, this video has gone on for too long, and I'd rather use uh, this as an opportunity to see if the guide is will be well received. Um, if you really enjoyed the guide, please give me a like and a subscribe if you want to see more guides like this or just general content. And if you've got any uh, you know, criticisms about the guide itself, just leave me a comment down below. And always, as always, remember, make them beautiful.